Hi, fam. Welcome back. Hope you guys are having a great day. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we're back with another reaction. It's another pitch meeting in the MCU. Which one is this, Dan? This week is Captain Marvel. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> All right. <laughs> There's going to be some plot holes here, people. Yes. I can't wait to figure out what they've come up with. <laughs> Cheers to you, fam. Enjoy. So, you have an Avengers commercial for me? Yes, sir, I <laughs> do. And this one's going to be an origin story for Captain Marvel. Oh, wow. We've done a lot of origin stories. How are we going to keep this fresh? By doing our normal origin story stuff, but giving her memory loss so we can reveal it in little fragments. Oh, that is slightly different. Plus, we'll put this one in the 90s because, you know, so many people are dead. Yeah, so Captain Marvel <laughs> is part of this Kree alien Star Force crew. Okay. But she's gonna slowly come to learn that she was a fighter pilot on Earth. Uh, it's gonna be fun for us to learn that with her. No, we're already gonna know. Oh, we are? Yeah, but we're gonna get to watch her figure it out, you know, much slower than us. I guess oh, no. that's exciting. No. Maybe. So anyway, Captain Marvel is in training with this Kree guy, Yon Rog, and he keeps telling her to stop being so emotional. Okay, so she's <laughs> like super emotional then? No, she's gonna be mostly stoic the entire movie, but people <laughs> People are going to keep telling her to stop being emotional. So what's her personality like, though? Oh, well, sometimes she makes clever remarks and then does a little smirk like this. Oh, that should be her personality, right? I hope so, because that's about it. So what actually happens in the movie? Oh, well, these Kree aliens are at war with these shape-shifting aliens called the Skrulls. Okay. And we're going to meet this Skrull commander, Talos. And what's his deal? Oh, well, he's green and for some reason Australian. Uh oh, being inexplicably <laughs> Australian is tight. Yeah, and he's like taking the form of the director of S.H.I.E.L.D. or something. So what happened to the old director? Unclear. Huh. Anyway, so Captain Marvel's going to end up landing on Earth and the Skrulls are going to chase her. Uh-oh. Then at the same time she's trying to figure out her origin story so her and nick fury go see maria rambo who might have a past with her oh nick fury that's fun that's gonna cost us so much in de-aging and rambo is like <laughs> yeah we were no. best friends and pilots together and it kind of sucks that you don't remember well, that does kind of suck and then talos shows up oh no the australian oh don't worry he's like hey we're good guys so please do a 180 on this immediately okay and she does and she does wow and rambo must be freaking out to find out that aliens exist she'll barely react to it huh yeah she'll see a scroll outside that's taking her form and playing with her daughter and she'll be like well that's kind of weird let's move on very considerate wow. of her to not react so we can keep the story moving yeah very considerate wow so then captain marvel has to get ready to fight the kree so she has to change her costume colors why does she need to do that so we can sell different versions of her toys oh i love oh, you so man. much yeah and she has a little panel on her arm that lets her do that for some reason so she lets rambo's daughter pick the colors isn't the kid gonna have a hard time figuring out alien graphic design technology not even a little bit oh <laughs> and we have these flashbacks from captain marvel's life where she's dealing with tough situations and mean guys oh we are yeah just this amazing montage where she gets knocked down but she gets up again you know they're never gonna keep her down <laughs> oh does she drink a whiskey drink and then a vodka drink and then a lager drink and then a cider drink Most what the hell definitely. are you talking about mm -hmm. actually this is making me think we should put a bunch of 90s music in this thing mm -hmm. yeah i guess we could but let's not overdo it no 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 let's overdo it oh okay <laughs> yeah let's get real heavy-handed with it. Let's even play just a girl from No Doubt during the final fight scene. Oh, very unsubtle. Yeah, super <laughs> on the nose. It's gonna be great. Anyway, so yeah, then she's gonna have to fight the Kree. Wow, is it gonna be difficult for her to take them on? Actually, it's gonna be super easy. Barely, Barely an, an inconvenience. inconvenience. Oh, really? Yeah, she just kind of taps into her full power and, you know, becomes the most powerful hero we've ever seen. What was her power set before that? Like, photon blasts or something uh, very vague yeah kind of and what are her powers now oh just uh you know all of them well okay then. <laughs> all of we're also gonna wow. kind of find out that she got her powers because of the tesseract remember that now are people that haven't seen the previous mcu films gonna understand what that is oh uh i don't know i'm just kidding we stopped caring about those people like five years ago wow. okay, yeah i was wondering why you brought them up <laughs> anyway i think it sounds good but it could be more entertaining you know did i mention there's a cat uh you didn't yeah there's a cat named goose okay so, you know, there you go. That makes everything more entertaining. Well, I don't know that just having a cat show up automatically increases the entertainment factor. Sure it does. Check this out. Oh, it's a kitty cat. <laughs> yeah, it's more entertaining now. Oh, wow. What a great day this turned out to be.
Wait, where were you keeping that? Anyway, so this cat is actually a powerful <laughs> alien. Oh, that is interesting. Yeah, and he's gonna scratch Nick Fury, and that's how he loses the eye. I feel like that really undermines the badass nature of the character. Yes. Yeah, but it's gonna be funny. Uh, that is more important. And so then Captain Marvel is gonna modify Fury's pager and be like, only contact me in case of emergency. Oh, okay, and that's why he knew to call her at the end of Infinity War? Exactly. So that means that aliens invading New York was not an emergency? Guess not. And a super sophisticated AI trying to take over the world wasn't an emergency either? No, both those situations were not a big deal, apparently. <laughs> huh. Oh, also Nick Fury finds out that her nickname was Avenger, because there's a photo that says Carol Avenger Danvers. Okay. And so that gives him an idea of a name for a new initiative oh he's working on. Oh. You see where I'm going with this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. The Carol Initiative. No, the Avengers <laughs> Initiative. Oh, right, that makes more sense. So yeah, now fans are gonna finally know where that name came from. Were fans wondering that? No. Well, okay then. And so, yeah, that's about it. Well, it sounds like a lot of fun. I hope people don't get too mad. Why would people get mad? Because this character is a lady and the internet exists? It's just a superhero <laughs> movie. I don't see how people could get upset about this. Really? Mm. You don't see how they can get upset about this? Huh? <laughs> okay, Mr. Producer Guy. <laughs> You know, I have to speak up for uh, Nick Fury on this one. Mm -hmm. Him losing his eye in that manner was incredibly undignified. It was. And it's like, wow, so really just a little cat scratch fever. It just in the eye just kind of went away later on. I'd say he's, he was supposed to be one of the biggest badasses in the MCU because he's this big tough guy with one eye and it turns out he lost it to a cat. They emasculated his character they in really this did. movie. <laughs> Jesus. That's bad. Yeah. That's bad, man. That's not, that's not fair to Nick Fury. Because he was fighting battles before these people were born. Mm hmm That's bad. Everything with Nick Fury kind of turned out bad for him here because the whole fact that he doesn't call her during all the previous emergencies that we've seen Earth face. He's not there for the Dark Elves. He's not there for the alien invasion in the first Avengers film. He's not there for, you know, for Loki showing up on Earth. Good point. It's like, what do you consider an emergency here? I can say, I would consider those pretty serious emergencies. You know, and, and going back to the whole, you know, People complaining about her on the internet when her whole personality is she makes a smart ass remark and then gives you a weird look yeah that's not a very good character no not if that's what you have to contribute other than that it's just what you're just lucky to be a girl boss come on you gotta have something more than that you can't write a character who's that simplistic no i mean she's basically a toned down tony stark i mean for one it's not original and two she does doesn't have the the gravitas that he does exactly this is one of the first examples of where producers and uh, I guess the big companies like Disney and whatnot mm -hmm. really started to go after the fans and start to say, you guys are what the problem is, not us. Forget the fact that they won't admit that bad writing has been a problem mm -hmm. because it's like until you actually take a look in the mirror and realize that there are, there are problems in your own house, you're never going to get anything solved. But you're completely ignoring that and trying and trying to save face in some kind of weird way by pointing at fans of Marvel and whatnot and mm -hmm. saying, if you don't like the way we're doing things here, that's not our problem, that's yours. Right. And it's like, that. this was kind of the first time I really started to notice that being a problem. Mm -hmm. And then I saw it in the final season of Game of Thrones and whatnot. And I know I'm going off topic there, but that's really just to make that point. Because this is the first time I noticed that. Man, fans are telling you they didn't like this movie and they didn't like the way the, char the character was portrayed. Mm -hmm. you know, maybe you should take a look at that and fix it in the future. I think if you had taken a moment and fixed it and made things better for future movies, yeah. you would have say you would have held on to these guys forever. Because of like, wow, you're actually listening to us. Yeah. I mean, there's no reason you can't have a female character as your main character. But, you know, but we've seen this done in a bunch of other films, and we've seen it done better. You know, you can look at the Kill Bill movies, you know. Mm. The main character is a female who's out for vengeance, but she's a really, really interesting character. Yeah, and she gets her ass kicked every step of the way, but she's got enough, venge uh, she's got enough vengeful uh, death in her mm -hmm. that she comes out on top. Yeah. But she's she was buried alive, she was beaten up, mm -hmm. she was stabbed, she had to fight the crazy 88s. <laughs> I mean, but later on you found out what her training was like. Yeah. It's like, we saw none of that with, with Carol Danvers here. Mm -mm. None of that. It's like you were born a badass. <laughs> Pretty much. That's it. Okay. You know, it's hard to connect to that, char that character. Like, even even like Doctor Strange, you know, he, he's kind of an ill-tempered person, but you can connect with him because you see him go through the struggle of not being able to use his arms, having to learn the magic, having to figure out how to use the magic creatively. He has to build up that character. 
She really doesn't. Yeah. Her whole her whole plot line is just amnesia. <laughs> it's a good point. And then mom pretending like there was there wasn't a look alike like you messing around with your daughter out there. Wait 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 wait. Are you not in fear for your child's life there even a little bit? Like how are you not worried about aliens in general? Okay. It must be Tuesday on the farm. <laughs> I guess so. And yeah, by God, they hit us with that '90s music in this one. <laughs> They went full 90s with this. A couple of them, you played them, you played them like overboard, and then it's like from the beginning, she crash lands into a blockbuster. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like wow, you're really ha hammering 90s here. Well, to be fair, it did kind of work with Guardians of the Galaxy because they really hammered the music in that too. Yeah, was was that the same director? No, I think it was really just you know, poor story writing more than anything. I'm about to say, if you had the same director, I think you would have found better 90s music. Oh, probably. Yeah. And you wouldn't have desecrated Nirvana's Come As You Are. Mm. So that pissed me off a little bit. I'm like, how, how dare you? <laughs> this band is so against corporate monarchy. Mm -hmm. And you just throw them right in, the, right in the middle of it. It's like, wow. Here's a song to corporate tell you. Why don't you just hang a cross upside down in uh, in Vatican City while you're at it? <laughs> Ooh. Well, don't give them ideas, Joe. I'm thinking about it. <laughs> I don't actually advocate for that at all. Mm. So. Or stampeding through the Vatican, no. as kinky as it is. Well, I think that on that note, that's where we're going to end things there, guys. <laughs> as always, be sure to like, subscribe, hit the bells, take a look at us on those things up there, and like and subscribe again. Also, consider joining us uh, as a member and helping support this channel even further. It's not required, and uh, I certainly wouldn't recommend it. <laughs> but, Joe, but join us anyway. We'd love to have you. But until then, this is Cocktail Flicks. I'm Joe. I'm Dan. And we'll catch you on the flip side. Cheers to you, fam. Cheers to you, Dan. Cheers to you, Joe. <laughs> Later, guys. Bye.